A massive fire underneath a bridge spanning the Ohio River closed a heavily traveled route between Cincinnati and northern Kentucky on Friday and damaged part of the steel structure. No injuries were reported. The fire broke out overnight near a playground in a park under the bridge, shutting down Interstate 471, according to a spokesperson for the Cincinnati Fire Department. Video showed flames soaring above the bridge near downtown Cincinnati. Chunks of concrete fell from the bridge and the fire warped a few steel beams, fire crews reported. The fire was under control hours later, but the bridge will remain closed. What caused the fire is under investigation. Ukraine and Russia are engaged in preliminary negotiations to halt strikes on each other's energy infrastructure. However, Russian President Vladimir Putin is unlikely to agree to a deal as long as Ukrainian forces remain on Russian territory in the Kursk region, reports the Financial Times. Kyiv seeks to revive negotiations mediated by Qatar, which came closer to an agreement in August, but were derailed by Ukraine's incursion into Kursk, sources including senior officials reported. There's very early talks about potentially restarting something. There's now talks on the energy facilities, said a diplomat informed about the negotiations. According to the official, Moscow and Kyiv have already reduced the frequency of attacks on each other's energy infrastructure in recent weeks as part of an arrangement reached by their intelligence agencies. However, according to a former senior Kremlin official, Putin is unlikely to agree to a deal until Russian forces drive Ukrainian troops out of the Kursk region, where they still control about 600 square kilometers of territory. Meanwhile, Ukraine plans to continue striking targets in Russia, including oil refineries, to exert pressure on Russia during negotiations. The Financial Times reports that the Kursk operation caused Moscow to withdraw from the previous round of negotiations in August when officials were beginning to plan an in-person meeting in Doha. Qatar began acting as a mediator in these talks in June following a summit in Switzerland to which Russia was not invited. Four Ukrainian officials told the Financial Times that last autumn, Kiev and Moscow reached a tacit agreement not to strike each other's energy facilities. As a result, Russia refrained from large-scale attacks on Ukrainian energy infrastructure that winter. This agreement was meant to pave the way for an official deal, the sources said. However, Kiev resumed drone attacks on Russian oil facilities in February and March of this year, aiming to increase pressure on Moscow after the failed 2023 counter-offensive. Despite warnings from the White House to cease strikes, Kiev continued its offensive and Moscow concluded that the tacit agreement had been breached, sources told journalists. Subsequently, Russia escalated the situation by launching volleys of long-range missiles targeting power plants across Ukraine, including the Tripilska thermal power plant located 40 kilometers from Kyiv, which was completely destroyed. 
According to the Financial Times, as part of the Ukrainian campaign that began in early 2024, at least nine of Russia's 32 largest oil refineries have been damaged. According to the latest survey from the Razumkov Center, the number of Ukrainians supporting peace negotiations with Russia has increased over the past year. However, they are still far from a majority. The office of the president has outlined the main condition for commencing negotiations with Russia, the withdrawal of hostile troops to their positions as of February the 24th, 2022. North Korean television has broadcasted footage of the country's latest giant missile test, with leader Kim Jong-un and his daughter watching. The footage showed a massive transporter erector launcher vehicle, commonly referred to as a TL, setting up for the launch. North Korea's official state news agency KCNA said that the missile flew thousands of kilometers into the sky and into space before falling into the sea east of the country. The images shown by North Korean television of the latest missile test have not been independently verified. On Friday, KCNA identified the missile as Wasong-19 ICBM and called it the world's strongest strategic missile and the perfected weapon system. KCNA said leader Kim Jong-un observed the launch, describing it as an appropriate military action to express North Korea's resolve to respond to its enemies' moves that escalated tensions and threats to North Korea's national security. It said Kim thanked weapons scientists for demonstrating North Korea's matchless strategic nuclear attack capability. South Korea's military earlier said that North Korea could have tested a solid-fueled missile but Friday's KCNA dispatch didn't say what propellant the Wasong-19 ICBM uses. Observers say the color of exhaust flames seen in North Korean media photos on the launch still suggest the new ICBM uses solid fuels. Before Thursday's test, North Korea's most advanced ICBM was known as the Wasong-18 missile which uses solid fuels. Preloaded solid propellants make it easier to move missiles and require much less launch preparation times than liquid propellants that must be fueled before liftoffs. So it's more difficult for opponents to detect launches by solid fuel missiles. In recent years, North Korea has reported steady advancement in its efforts to obtain nuclear-tipped missiles.